This is Russ Anderson. In this section of the tutorial, we're ready to start rendering. What we want to do is to create a layer of the render over black with an alpha channel for later compositing in our favorite compositing application. Now there are two different ways to do that. The first way is when your 3D application already supports 360 VR cameras. And that's the easy way. The second way is what you can do if the 3D application does not support a 360 VR camera. And in that case, there's some kind of nice facilities in Synthize that let you still be able to create the renders that you need to insert into your 360 VR shot using your regular, you know, any old 3D rendering application. But for starters, We'll just do it the easy way first, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Now, 360 VR is new. Even if your app supports 360 VR camera, you might have to adjust the export that you got. The exporter may or may not support the camera as well. So if, if you just export and you don't have a 360 VR camera created in your 3D application, you can simply change that camera to the 360 VR omnidirectional panoramic spherical equirectangular camera. And you want to do that without changing the position or orientation of the camera on any frame. And one way to do that is simply to create a new camera and parent it precisely to the existing as exported camera and then simply use that new camera that, that you just created instead of the one that came from the export. Now here we're going to be using Blender and the Blender export does support Blender's 360 VR camera a bit. The catch is that you need to use the cycles renderer and that means you'll need to set up your materials manually within Blender's. It also means that uh, since I'm not super familiar with cycles the, the resulting renders seem to take pretty long, so we won't be able to do that quite in real time as, as, as typically the case. So in this process, we're going to start with the world stabilized scene from the previous step. And we're just going to go first to the coordinates panel and select all the trackers and make them non-exportable. So you could do that in Cynthia if you wanted, but we don't need to have them in Blender, so we're just not going to have them exported. We're also going to go over to the scene settings and I'm going to rack up the ambient color quite a lot. So this, this has nothing really to do with needing to do this for a technical reason. This is just more of the case that in this particular scene I've got the light on one side and the camera on the other side. So I need to have something or we're not going to see anything at all. And Rather than being subtle in Blender, we're just going to use the ambient illumination to do a little bit better with that. So now we can just render the whole thing or export the whole thing to Blender. And we're going to be running Blender automatically. And you can see the arguments that set that up here, the little options. And you, know, you always have to set up your exact Blender version and where to find it. You know, there's the Blender version of the day. So you need to get that set in so Synthize knows what to run. I've also got some little parameters set up so that the Blender is going to fire up immediately in the window, which it's gone and done here now. So it's now run that export. So we've got that here. Here's our building in the Blender environment. Now, like I said, we need to set up the materials there. So bear with me for a second. We're going to grab that office building and we need to toss the non-cycles material there. And we're just going to throw on a new image texture which is the same as the old image texture that we're supposed to have. So maybe sometime I'll figure out how to have Synthize do this automatically also. But 
so far that is just a puzzle. So now we have our textured building back. And you know the deal is that the camera within the 3D environment here is moving along the path that we got from synthize. And that's what's going to make this process work nicely. So you see this panoramic view, which isn't right at all in Blender. So we need to now go and set up some more of the, the settings for the render. One thing, I think we need to have this transparent box check so that it's going to be rendering over a nice black background. With the alpha, we need to make sure that our output format has a alpha channel so that we have that stored away. So let's just grab the desired output location there. And now we should be ready to go. So we're just going to do render animation. And it's going to fire up. And you know, there's our first little render. You can see it's against black. And you can see it's chugging through a frame at a time. And it's got overall a bit of time to go. So rather than standing here and waiting for this to happen, we're just going to pause our capture window and let this run. And we will be back when it's done. And OK, here we are back in Blender. It's about 15 minutes later to do the render. You can see the building has made its way over to the other side there. So at this point, let's go back to Synthize. And you know, Blender has rendered all those layers, so we have that data available. But we might want to check whether, in fact, they actually line up right. And we can do that here inside of Synthize. So I'm going to go and do a change shot images. And I'm going to select the images that we just rendered. One thing you should be sure to do is to turn on the Keep Alpha, because you do want to keep the Alpha available. And now you see the Images are there. Something kind of funky has happened, though, it seems. But really what you're seeing is you're seeing the results of the stabilization that we did to the original shot still being applied to these images. So we want to go to the image preprocessor. I'm just going to hit P now again to bring that up. And on the Adjustment tab, we'll roll back to the beginning of the shot. And I'm going to do a control right click on the delta UV and on the delta rotation. So this is just to clear out the stabilizer. Because all those adjustment values have been cooked up by the stabilization stuff to stabilize the original shot. But we don't need to do that to the shots rendered out of Blender. So now it's just reading those back in. And I find the right combination here. Now we've got the, well, <laughs> we've got the building is sitting there. And uh, the rendered image is right behind it. Ah, there's what we need to do. We need to switch to the wireframe view. So now we've got the wireframe view superimposed over the images that were just rendered by Blender. And you can see that everything lines up, and that's what we're looking for. So that's telling us that we did get the images produced in the right locations coming out of that Blender 360 VR panoramic uh, equirectangular camera. So that is super. I'll point out also, if you want to check on your alpha channel and make sure that that's OK, you can go over to the Features panel 
Let me just clear those out. And uh, select the alpha channel. So you can see that we've just got pure white there and nowhere else. So that's what we're looking for. You can see there's a little smoothing along the edge. So the alpha channel is looking good. So those renders coming out of Blender are ready to go into our later compositing. So that brings us to our conclusion of our first easy way of doing this task. And in the next one we'll look at the somewhat more complicated but still kind of neat way to do it even when your 3D application does not have the VR camera available. Thanks for watching.